This week was filled with news from teams and the FIA itself. While we covered the FIA announcement from Thursday in our latest video, there is lots of exciting news announced by four teams this week. I'm Luke Trigger, and this is Simply F1. Alpha Tauri punched above their weight last year, the little Italian team producing a very tidy package that they were able to consistently eke the very best out of. The development of the new generation cars has been difficult for all teams, as they had to put it on hold when the COVID-19 pandemic struck, only to continue it a year later in 2022. For a team like Alpha Tauri, who have one of the smallest budgets on the grid and just released their new machine, the AT03, that was made even more difficult by the fact they were moving wind tunnels, switching from a 50% model to a more current 60% model, and thus were doing double the work and stretching their resources for a period of time. The benefits of continuing to utilise Red Bull technology elements for the back of the car, gearbox and hydraulics, and the rear suspension, are that the regulations now require them to use the same specification parts whereas previously they used parts from the year old Red Bull design. This may improve performance, but they won't have a year's worth of operating data to rely on when they integrate the pieces into their design. They will continue to use a Honda engine, but it will be known as Red Bull powertrains from this season onwards, as the Japanese company has decided to exit the competition at the end of 2021. It's safe to say that Williams' 2021 season was positively astonishing, with the British team moving from the bottom of the pack to 8th in the constructors' standings, passing not one but two teams. They are, however, fully aware of the difficult task ahead of them in recapturing their glory days and regaining their status as world championship contenders. Albon sees it as a chance for redemption after being demoted from race driver to reserve at Red Bull in 2020. He didn't let his head drop last year, instead making the most of the situation by totally immersing himself in the team and offering to assist wherever he could. Williams is the only team that has yet to use the 2022 spec 18 inch tyres due to a lack of resources when deciding whether or not to develop a mule car. The pods are shorter and steeper in descent than any other 2022 design we've seen so far yet. Their engine cover inlet is also exceptionally large, implying that the intercooler's cooling paths run through it. This has allowed for a significantly reduced side pond lower down. The suspension is a traditional push rod front pull rod rear setup. This year, Williams uses a Mercedes gearbox and hydraulics. They used to make their own, but they still design and produce their own suspension. Because of the stripped back bodywork on the Williams, the entire area is clearly apparent. The area atop the Venturi ramp sits naked adrift to the side pods in comparison to, for instance, the Alfa Tauri highlighting the radically different tactics adopted with cooling systems. Ferrari rebounded from their worst season of 40 years with a competitive campaign in 2021 that yielded third place in the Constructors' Championship. They shifted their focus to 2022 early on, even introducing a hybrid system late last year that was supposed to launch this season, but worked exceptionally well. The new Ferrari F175 marks yet another innovative approach of constructing the bodywork under the new era regulations, in a launch season marked by very stark aesthetic variations between cars. The Ferrari design shows a side pod configuration that has a gentle downward inclination in the lower areas, but an upward ramp where the side pods merge into the engine cover and a scalloped out part in that transition. It has cooling slats on the side pod top surface, just like the Aston Martin. This has resulted in a side pod shape that is highly undercut in the front, beneath the little slat like radiator inlet, but soon merges with a flat slab side before heavily undercutting again when it merges into the coke bottle part at the back. When viewed from the front, McLaren has chosen a fairly bluff side pod design, generating high pressure area that will aid produce a more powerful outwash away from the floor. Ferrari has employed only the top leading edge to do so, instead hollowing out a large undercut area beneath. These are simply alternative approaches to making that trade-off. The engine's architecture is substantially different. It is thought to maintain the combined turbine compressor turbo, which makes the Ferrari unique in that regard now that Alpine has gone to split configuration. Mercedes has won the Constructors' Championship for eight consecutive seasons now, while Max Verstappen grabbed the driver's title from Hamilton on the final lap of the 2021 season. Russell has been moved to a race seat at Mercedes, replacing Valtteri Bottas following three impressive seasons at Williams. 
On Friday, Mercedes unveiled their W13, their new car for the 2022 season, which features a silver base livery with black embellishments. When it comes to the new technologies, the early representations don't disclose all. The nose protrudes relatively far down over all front wing sections, like it does with the Ferrari. The leading edge of the wing is genuinely straight. The upper flaps are twisted exceedingly far outwards. This has never been seen in another car. The cooling slits in the carbon shell are not visible. Instead, the heat from the engine is vented to the outside through a hole in the fairings back. The rear wing is simply supported by a single support that is linked to the DRS mechanism. We've only seen this at Williams and McLaren so far. Only on the underside does the new Mercedes stand apart from the competitors. The outside border of the side pods is extremely wavy. This appears to be for the purpose of creating artificial vortices that will close the Venturi tunnels beneath the automobile laterally. Alpine has named Otmar Staffenmar as their new team principal, with Bruno Famin, the former FIA Deputy Sports Secretary General, taking over as director of the engine section. Alpine revealed a new organisation on Monday in Paris, ahead of the team's unveiling of their 2022 car. Alpine claims the new organisation would allow the team to compete for the title within 100 races of the introduction of new regulations. What's your favourite car reveal from this week? Do you like the return of the Silver Arrows? Will the retro colours help Ferrari in the fights for the title this season? Are you happy with Albon's return to F1? Let us know in the comments below and be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching and ta -ra.